Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new MSI QB NUC AI Plus Mini PC. And I do want to mention that this is more of a uh, business slash productivity mini PC. And MSI does offer their three year advanced replacement warranty with these when purchased through commercial channels. So for small businesses, we'll talk more about that in just a bit. And these were designed from the ground up to run continuously. And the main new feature here with the QB NUC AI Plus series is the CPU. That's one of the main reasons I wanted to get my hands on it. And with this new version, they're offering three different CPU models. But what we have here is the Intel Core Ultra 7 258V. So with this, we get eight cores, 16 threads, and that Intel Arc 140V iGPU. And like I mentioned, they do offer this with up to a three year advanced replacement warranty when purchasing this through commercial channels. So small businesses or larger businesses can get this three year advanced replacement warranty. But if you're purchasing this as an individual, you can get their one year standard warranty with it. But the advanced replacement warranty does come in really handy for these things. All you need to do is contact MSI. They're going to ship a new one out to you. Once that gets there, you'll box the other one up, send it back. That way you don't have much downtime at all. Really awesome setup, and they offer it for up to three years on these units. But if you weren't looking for that, you could come out a bit cheaper in the end by buying these with the standard one year warranty. Inside of the box, along with the QB NUC AI Plus, you're going to get a 120 watt power supply. We've also got a VESA mounting bracket and an external power button. So this is cool because you can mount this on the back of your monitor and then go ahead and have this on the side or the bottom of the monitor using some double sided sticky tape it comes with. That way you don't have to reach around to power this thing on or off. And another new feature that NUC supports is what's known as PowerLink. So if you've got a supported monitor like this one here, the MSI Pro MP251E2, actually relatively inexpensive, 120 hertz, perfect edge IPS display. Basically, you can power on that mini PC just by pressing the power button on the monitor itself. And this kind of works like SEC over HDMI. It's a really cool feature. That way, all you need to do is just power the monitor on and the mini PC is powered up as well. When it comes to I.O., up front here, we've got our power button, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, two full-size USB 3.2 ports, micro SD card slot, and a dedicated co-pilot button. Moving around back, two full-size USB 2.0 ports, dual 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, two USB 4 ports, they both run at a 40 gig protocol, and full-size HDMI port. I wanted to give you a quick look at the internals and it's pretty easy to get in here to upgrade that SSD, just four screws on the bottom. We can't upgrade the RAM because it's actually baked into this Intel chip. And you might notice this little black device on the bottom of the PC once you pull it apart. This is actually a built-in speaker. We've got a D mic and speaker with this unit. And when it comes to the overall specs, we've got that Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, but they do offer this up to the Core Ultra 9 288V. With this one, we've got eight cores, eight threads, up to 4.8 gigahertz, 32 gigs of super fast RAM running at 8,533 megahertz. And again, this is baked in to the Core Ultra chip. Graphics are handled by the Intel Arc 140V iGPU. And with this, we have eight XE2 cores up to 1,950 megahertz. It's got Wi-Fi 6E, Bluetooth 5.3. I mentioned that built-in D mic and speaker. And out of the box, this is gonna be running Windows 11. First thing I wanted to take a look at here was the BIOS, and this is MSI's new Click BIOS X for these QBs. Uh, we've got all the information about the system over here, and uh, from advanced, we really don't have any power settings because this will kind of dynamically scale to what we need. We've got our PCIe subsystem settings, integrated peripherals, integrated graphics, power management set up, and this might come in handy for a lot of people out there. Restore after power loss, out of the box it's just powered off, but we can set this up to power back on or last state. I'm gonna have it come right back on. And we've also got the MSI power link, which can be totally disabled from the BIOS, but personally I really do like this. We saw it with that MSI monitor. From security, we've got our secure boot, trusted computing, boot, we can change the boot drive from here, and then we've got save and exit. The only thing I really didn't see in here was like a performance profile, but like I mentioned, it kind of dynamically scales for us. I figured it would be right under here, power management setup, but we've only got that ERP. We took a look at the restore after power loss and the power link. But yeah, uh, actually kind of dig what they've done here. It does look really nice, very modern. 
But let's go ahead and get into Windows. I'm just gonna save my settings here. We'll move over there now. Jumping in here a bit closer to get a better look at everything. And I've had this up and running for a little while now. As you can see, we've got that Intel Core Ultra 7 258V, 32 gigs of RAM at 8,533 megahertz. There's no way to upgrade it. So when purchasing a system like this, you definitely wanna make sure you're getting enough. And 32 seems to be a real nice sweet spot for these little chips here. We've also got that Intel AI Boost NPU. And of course, the Intel Arc 140VI GPU. So obviously with a system like this, I mean, you can see the wallpaper that came pre-installed. Copilot is kind of a big thing that they're pushing with Microsoft. We've got that Copilot button right up front here. So if you press it at any given time, it'll bring it right up for us. And it really depends on the end user, how you're gonna utilize this. You can create images, you can have it summarize stories for you, or you can have it help you write emails. So let's say we wanted to write a first draft for a story about, um, let's do a, a hamster detective that lost his chew toy, I don't know. Once we have the details in there, it's just gonna give us a nice little first draft. And I mean, Copilot is here with this PC. If you wanna use it like that, it's built into Windows 11. But there are some more powerful tools that we can use when it comes to AI, like let's say LM Studio. So yeah, this is awesome. And what I wanna do is actually, I'm gonna bring this over to the right hand side. We are gonna bring up our task manager and just see exactly what this is utilizing. I've got a couple models downloaded. So from the drop down, uh, I've got DeepSeek R1. We've also got Gemma, which is basically Google Gemini. DeepSeek does take a bit longer with this little chipset. So we're gonna go with Gemma 3. It's gonna load it in and we can basically ask this any question. We'll go ahead and start a new conversation. Once it's finished loading in, we'll just ask it, how does a permanent magnet motor work? And yeah, this is actually working way quicker because earlier I tested it with deep sea. Same question, it thought for 24 seconds before it even started giving me an answer. So I'm not exactly sure if I'm on an older version of deep seek or not, but uh, Gemma 3 seems to be working really well with this setup. And if we take a look over here, you can see it is utilizing that GPU more than anything else. NPU is not utilized right now, at least with this version of LM Studio. Now, I do think that there is a way to get this to work, uh, but there are some optimizations that need to be had. And to tell you the truth, without all of those optimizations, this 140V iGPU is probably going to outperform that NPU. And that's really until, you know, we get a lot of optimizations for something like this. But yeah, just going to give us a rundown on how that permanent magnet motor works. One thing I really like using on these Intel Ultra chips is uh, Intel's AI Playground. So this is for ARC graphics. And of course we've got that ARC 140V. We can create images, we can enhance images. We've also got kind of an assistant here. We can ask it any question. I've already gone through and downloaded the uh, models that we need to get this to work. So I'm just gonna input something. It's gonna create a few images for me. We'll just do the cute MSI dragon making pancakes. Let's go ahead and generate this. It's gonna give me a few results. Okay, so that last one definitely resembles that little red MSI dragon a bit more, but they came out pretty decent, not too bad. So yeah, if you wanted to generate some images here, uh, Intel's AI Playground is super simple to use. You download the application, it'll download the models for you. And in here, we can also download comfy UI. So if you really wanna get into it, you can use that. But I found for just kind of messing around, the AI Playground does work out really well. Another thing we have access to on these QB Nux is MSI Center. And there's a few different features that we can install. Now, just from the hardware monitor, it's gonna give us a rundown of everything going on with the PC itself. I've downloaded a few here. We've got a user scenario. There's MSI recovery, cooling wizard, MSI AI engine. So you can disable this if you want to, but basically it's gonna use AI to detect what's going on. So in performance mode here for let's say gaming, it'll automatically switch over there. But while web browsing and video playback, it doesn't need that kind of performance. So I just leave this on because it's gonna optimize performance depending on what you're doing with the PC at any given time. I mentioned this is more of a business and productivity mini PC, but it doesn't mean we can't game in our downtime. And performance here is actually pretty impressive. Intel has been doing a great job updating their Arc GPU drivers. 
Right now we've got Cyberpunk 2077 running at medium settings with XESS set to balance 1080p and we're over 60 FPS. In fact, we're getting an average of 63 FPS. Taking it to performance will give us a little more. Every once in a while you will see a dip under, but uh, set this up with like a free sync monitor. You won't see any screen tearing and it's a really smooth experience. I was pretty impressed by this and it's been a little while since I've tested this game on this uh, 140V. So it's definitely something I want to go back to with these newer updated drivers. Next game I wanted to test here was Marvel Rivals. And with this, I did have to drop it down to low settings. But keep in mind, this is one of those games that does support Intel's XESS frame generation. So if you wanted to go up and use frame gen, you definitely could. And the final one we have is Forza Horizon 5. With this, we don't need any extra scaling. We're at 1080p medium settings and we're getting over 100 FPS on average. So you can definitely game on this thing. And if you take a look up at the top left hand corner, while gaming using that MSI AI assistant, it will boost that TDP up to around 40 watts every once in a while, but uh, sustain, we're at a 35 watt TDP. So overall, I think MSI has done a great job with the new QB NUC AI Plus, and it's perfect for small and larger businesses, especially when you pair it up with that three year advanced replacement warranty. That would come in really handy, especially if you've got a lot of these deployed, uh, you never know what's gonna happen. So to minimize downtime there, I think that's actually a really awesome idea. So that's gonna wrap it up for this one. If you're interested in learning a little more about MSI's QB NUC series, I'll leave links in the description. And if there's anything else you wanna see tested on this, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.